Okay, so hi everybody. Welcome to a talk uh, regarding the magical world of IP packets. We're going to explain the topic soon. Um, this is Tal and myself, Sharon. We work for Clarity for the past few years. We mainly do reverse engineering in the OT domain. So we break up PLCs, HMIs, engineering station, etc. And we research OT protocols. And today we're gonna talk about the research that we have conducted um, regarding some ICS uh, vendors. But before that, we want to show you our cool lab. This is our setup. We have uh, different vendors, uh, different PLCs from all over the world. Uh, Rockwall, Schneider, Siemens, you name it. We have everything from everything. Uh, and this is where the research mainly were, was conducted. So today we're going to talk about uh, what are change IP packets. Uh, we're going to explain why they're being used and uh, who, who uses them. Uh, we're going to show some protocol examples of how different vendors implemented the change IP packets. Uh, we're going to discuss the security implications and security aspects of what it means uh, that you have change IP packets in your network. And finally, we're going to sum everything up and we're going to release some of our custom SNOT rules that we have developed according to our research. So, change IP packet. Think of the situation that you're buying a new device and you want to plug it into a network. The device has no network settings, uh, but still you plug it into a network and somehow you're able to communicate with it. So how it is done? When you plug, you, when you plug in your device inside your network, you send a change IP packet, a magical change IP packet to the device and suddenly the device gets a new IP address and you're able to communicate via layer three, which is the IP layer. Yes, it's true that you need to know some basic element about the device. For example, in modern Ethernet networks, you need to know at least the MAC address of the device. But since MAC address is relatively easy element to achieve in a network, if you're sniffing the network, you can see ARP responses or gratuitous ARPs. So it's relatively easy to get the MAC address. So we assume it's a no problem. But before we dive in deeply into the ma magic change IP packets, we want to give you some examples from the IT world regarding what a change IP packet is. So let's talk about what are magic packets. Think of uh, the IT domain. Uh, back then at the late 90s where computers was in the rise and the, the power consumption of the entire compu computer industry was in the rise as well. Uh, many vendors and governments wanted to reduce the power consumption so they've, they recommended people to shut down the n network devices or computers when they're not being used. That was fine until, until the IT administrators wanted to conduct some maintenance processes, but the computers were turned off. So they could not back up the computers, they could not perform any updates. They got really mad. So that's why AMD and HP came with a solution. The computer, when it is not being used, will be turned off, but only the network card will be always connected. So the ne network card will always get electricity power and will constantly sniff the network. Once it detects a magical sequence of bytes, in our case the wake on LAN packets are six times F's and then 16 times the MAC address of the network card, only then magically it will turn on the computer and now the IT admins c can perform their maintenance processes. So. The computer was turned off, only the network card is connected to the to electricity power. It detects a magical sequence of bytes, and then it turns on the computer. That's 
in general, the concept of magic pockets. Another example we can find in the malicious world, for example, the chaos or the C door backdoor. Those backdoors are constantly sniffing the network, and once they detect a magic sequence, it can be a magic sequence of bytes, or it can be a magic sequence of attributes, for example, port knocking. And once they detect those magical sequences, they will do something, and in the malicious world, they probably gonna send a reverse shell back to the attacker. So that's the concept of magic pockets. Now, let's talk about how, this is how the packet looks. You see the six times Fs, and then 16 times the, the make address. And now that we've covered some classical IT examples from of what the magic packet is, I want to discuss what are change IP packets and why do we use them and what's so magical about them. So, first of all, we're human beings, right? We like things to be relatively easy, simple for us. We don't want to get up, we want to buy a new device, plug it in into our network, and then plug and play. We can easily communicate with it. So, that's why the, magic, the change IP packets were invented, because we're lazy, because we're human beings. We don't want to configure back-to-back -back physically the devices. We just want to take the device, plug it in somewhere in the network, and then s <coughs> immediately start to communicate with it. Change IP packets allow us to do that, because if you're connecting your device in the network, you can send the magic change IP packet to the device, the device will will get the IP address and you could communicate with it further uh, remotely. But what's so magical about it? So first of all, you're gaining a new access via layer three. So you're gaining new access to device which you did not have before. So <coughs> secondly, those devices are acting in some way like a backdoor because they're constantly sniffing the network. They're searching for magic sequences of bytes or magic sequences of attributes, and suddenly they, do, they are doing something that you told to do. And third, most of the protocols that we'll see soon are not being used constantly. They're not common because they're being used only when you need to configure the device. So we treat them as very esoteric protocols that we, can, we rarely see in, the, in, the, in our networks. Okay, what are the types of change IP protocols? First of all, we have the standardized protocol. Standardized protocols are protocols which have many different commands. For example, to start the PLC, stop the PLC, maybe restart the PLC, read or write addresses, all the regular and basic functionality that you know. But one of those commands is the change IP, or the change network configuration. And we'll see an example. First of all, we have Profinet. Profinet is a standardized layer two protocol, which is mainly used in Siemens environments and is being used to configure PLCs. For example, the Simadic S7300, which can be found in many nuclear facilities, <coughs> is configured and maintained by Profinet. You probably have heard about Simadic S7300 because that's the famous PLC that Stuxnet attacked a few years ago. As you can see, Profinet is a layer two. It's a very standardized protocol. It consists of many different commands, but one of them is the change configuration. As you can see in the picture, we've used this functionality in order to change the IP of our device. Another example is the GESDI protocol by General Electric. This protocol is used heavily in the renewable energy industry, such as turbines. And it is being used to control the Mark VI family of General Electric. What's unique about Mark VI PLCs is that they all run 
on QNX. QNX is an Unix embedded operation system. And because of that, it consists many uh, very commonly used Unix uh, commands. For example, the if config. Another thing that you, sh you should know about the Mark 6 family is that they have a very unique command, which is command C, which allows us to run any command that we want. And it will run on a shell on the device. So we combined the two. And we created a change IP packet using the C, com C type command. And we were able to run a shell command on the device. And we changed the IP of the device. Another type that we would like to discuss today are protocols that their entire pr purpose is just for setting and exchanging the network configuration. For example, we have RCDP, which is Rugged, rugged Com Discovery Protocol. That's a protocol that was appropriately invented by Rugged Com to maintain and configure rug, Rugged Com devices. So we're able to maintain and configure Rugged Com switches and routers only via this protocol. What's unique about this protocol is that it has that it has an uh, authentication mechanism which requires the users to, to create a unique hash, which consists of the username and password of the device, among other stuff. And only with this hash, we can change and configure the rugged com devices. So we have been researching this protocol for a long time. And eventually, we were able to break up all the different fields of the protocol, as you can see. And in yellow, you can see the authentication hash. And in red, you can see the IP that we changed the device to. Another type of protocols which <coughs> are protocols which have magic sequences. Just like we have seen before with the Wacom LAN packets, those protocols use a very unique sequence of bytes. And only when they get the, those sequence of bytes, only then they will do what they were being told. A very similar group is the magic attributes. Some devices are not even implementing a protocol at all. They're using the attributes of a different layer of the packet. And when they detect a certain unique attributes, it will trigger the change IP functionality. For example, the GE General Electric PAC systems is a family of controllers just like RX3i or RX7i that have a very unique functionality. The CPU or the network card will consistently sniff the network just like a backdoor. And when it detects a special and unique TCP packet, as you can see here, with a, a very unique attributes of source port 1 to desk port 1, as you can see in the picture, only then it will understand, just like a backdoor, that we're trying to communicate with it. And then the device will take the packet, will extract the destination IP address, and it will set it for itself. This kind of a behavior is very similar to what backdoors are doing. Another thing to, important to notice here is that those devices, those PLCs, will not take the destination IP if the device is not in a stop mode. So if the, if the PLC is in a production mode, the device will not change the IP. Obviously, this is a security mechanism the General Electric did in order to avoid harming the production. Another cool type of protocols are the encapsulated protocols. For example, BNR didn't want to implement their own protocol. Instead, they are using SNMP, which is a very commonly used protocol, simple network management protocol. But they're using the SNMP over Ethernet, which is a very uncommonly SNMP flavor. SNMP has two main functionality of get and set <coughs> attributes. BNR chose to implement SNMP with dire specific OIDs. For example, you can see here the OID. 
and if you get getting this OID, you will receive the IP address, and if you're setting via SNMP this OID, you will set the IP address. So for example, we have constructed a packet over SNMP, and you can see that when we set the specific OID that I mentioned before, we were able to change the IP of the device. Now, all of those use cases are normal, which means OT admins and IT admins are using them daily. But what happens when attackers are using them? What happens when we're going evil to the dark side? The basic concept here is that if I, as the IT owner, IT admin, can say the magic word and change the IP of the device, attackers can do the same. Attackers can say the magic word as well. So what can they do with it? First of all, if they're changing the IP addresses of my PLCs in production, obviously they can cause denial of service and do some bad stuff. Secondly, attackers can achieve active and passive men in the middle, but before we're diving in into what are passive and active men in the middle, let's see how such an attack can occur. So first of all, we have a basic setup of HMI communicating and querying a PLC. The PLC is controlling a motor, and the motor <coughs> is running at speed of 212 RPM. Normally, the HMI will query the PLC and ask for the motor speed. The PLC will respond with 212 RPM, which is the normal speed, and everything is good. But then the attacker infliterates my network and sends the change IP magic packet to my PLC and asks to change the IP to .66. The PLC changes the IP and then the attacker changes its own IP to .10, what the PLC had previously, and informs the HMI that it is now .10. The HMI now thinks that the attacker is the PLC and starts querying the attacker as if it were the PLC. And the attacker who wants to stay in stealth mode sends back to the, PL to the HMI that he is running at the speed of 212. But in the background, it sends the PLC a change motor speed to 2000, from 200 to 2000. And then obviously, bad stuff can happen. You should know that this scenario is not so imaginary. A very similar attack was performed by Stuxnet in 2010, which conducted a man-in-the-middle attack and changed the running, running speed of centrifuges in an uranium nuclear plant. This is a very likely to happen scenario if your network is not secured. And that's why we need a lot of security. So yeah, we see why uh, we should have concerns about the change IP functionality. But what is the awareness to this issue? What are the vendors are doing about it? Um, so let's see an example. Seven years ago, the CV was published uh, regarding the change IP functionality in the C protocol. The C protocol is a common industrial protocol which is heavily used in the Rockwell ecosystem. It is a very complex uh, protocol that can use, be used for a lot of stuff from data acquisition and configuring the PLC. Um, so one of the, one of the features is it it set the IP of the device. Um, according to the CV, changing the IP of the device can cause a uh, denial of service, uh, it can cause cause an denial service and disrupt our process in the in our facility and break a lot of things. Um, but the question whether, whether it is a vulnerability or just a feature, um, it is hard to answer this question because at the end of the day it is just a feature of the protocol. Since then Rockwell had some protection to the protocol, added some authentication to it, and made it much harder to change the IP of the device, but it is still possible today, because if the OT admin can do that, an attacker can do it too. Um, here is a bad packet with the IP that we set. 
Another solution that we already mentioned earlier is requiring that the PLP PLC will be in stop mode. Um, yeah, so uh, an attacker won't be able to disrupt uh, our, our production environment with that packet. It just won't work. Uh, another good solution is requiring, requiring authentication in order to make configuration changes to our PLC, which make a lot of sense. Um, but not, not everyone doing do that. Most of the cases, you can just uh, tell it to change its IP. Um, so let's take a moment to, uh, to look on a protocol uh, that try to implement some protections. The Schneider Net Manage protocol, which is used by the Schneider Modicon to change its network configuration. Um, so we looked on that protocol, and in first looked, it looked encrypted. But after looking at it for more, we saw that it just uh, XOR with a simple static hard-coded key. We were able to extract the key and uh, look on the protocol itself. Uh, we, saw, we saw some uh, credentials in the request, but when we crafted our own packet and sent them to the PSC, we noticed that the scanation are not being validated at all, which means you can send whatever you want and it will accept it and uh, change the IP of the device. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we contacted the vendor and they told us that they recommend to, ch dis to disable the service after using it for the initial setup. Um, they are aware to the problem with this functionality and this is why it is mentioned in the documentation to disable this feature. So yeah, this, that is another solution, uh, giving the user the responsibility to protect himself and disable this feature. But the question is, can we always do it? Sadly, the answer is no. In most of the cases, the change IP functionality is part of the protocol. We cannot just disable and enable it. Um, not all the vendors are giving us those, this option. So what can we do? So here are some tips for making your network more secure. Uh, first of all, configure a secure password. In some protocols, as I mentioned, uh, ch the changing device configuration is locked behind authentication, but if we don't set up a password or don't, don't change the default one or set a simple password like uh, 123456, um, we are not protected. So don't forget to set a secure password to your devices. Um, Another option, in some PLCs there is a physical switch in the PLC itself that can be changed between active mode and configure mode. And in some of those, the PLC can be configured unless if the key is in the configuration state. So, yeah, so don't forget the key in that state. So an attacker won't be able to change its configuration while it's in product chain mode. Um, yeah, so another thing that is important to do is, is uh, separate your network, separate the users from the PLCs, and uh, make sure that us a user that is not supposed to talk to a PLC won't do it with a strict firewall rules. Um, because, yeah, yeah, it will make your network more, uh, much more secure. Another thing is monitor your network. Don't let an attacker stay undetected. There are some powerful IDS and IPA to tools out there that, uh, that can uh, monitor and secure a network. Um, preferably use an, an, a solution that knows how to do deep inspection to all two protocols and detects the attacks that we talk, talked about, because not all the tools can do that. Um, so yes, yeah, Ron mentioned it earlier, after our research, we wrote some snot rules that will detect some of those potential attacks that we mentioned, and detect some of those change IP uh, packets. Um, yeah, you, you will be able to see it later in our presentation. So yeah, so we are giving a powerful, uh, powerful tool with, uh, by the vendors to set our, the IP of our uh, PLC remotely. But this gives us some responsibility to protect us, our network because if we can use, use it, an attacker can use it too. So yeah, we've seen, we've seen today a couple of uh, different protocols that we've been researching. Um, those protocols allow us to change the IP of the devices 
in various ways. Most of those protocols behave just like backdoors because they have some sequence unique bytes or sequence unique attributes and the devices are constantly sniffing them for detecting changes and understanding that someone is trying to communicate with them. Then we discussed some of the security aspects of what it means in our network. And finally, we, have, we gave some uh, security tips of how to be secure. And we're going to also release some of our custom rules that we've developed according to our research. And that's it. That's a, a table that summarizes all the different protocols that we have been researching and the security and layers. Thank you.